My name is Dr. Siana Ma'roof Shafi. I am a general practitioner from London who has um, had the opportunity to start a, a clinic in a refugee camp and we call ourselves Kitrinos Healthcare. With the refugees, I always put myself in their situation. I think everybody deserves a chance in life. We are focusing on the people who are based in the camp, which are more than like 8,000 people, who are coming with their acute disease. They have a lot of problems because most of them have been on very long journeys, been exposed to very dangerous things. We're humans, we deserve to survive. That's our right. In our clinic, we rely on core members of the staff who are actually from the people. I mean, the journey of the interpreters, so my um, most senior interpreter, he's now been promoted and he's actually taken uh, the role of Angelus. He's now the operations manager, Abdul Hadi. He's from Syria. He's an incredible individual. He lives in Greece with his wife and his young son and he was working in a kitchen when I first found him. He was about to be the head chef there preparing meals and then he told me his story that he was actually in medical school until the third year in Syria when the war broke out and he's never been able then to continue his studies. Now this is something that I wholeheartedly felt because from Sri Lanka myself, I, my own family, my uncles, three of them were in medical school when the Sri Lankan war broke out and they never got to finish their studies. But you know, they're doing better things and other things with their lives. But with Abdul Hadi in particular, what I noticed that he was, he was so upbeat and so capable, you know, he would try to do everything from helping be a nurse in the clinic, to fetching water if someone was thirsty, to speaking to the authorities on behalf of us if someone needed advocating for, um, which is a, quite a common thing. So his story, you know, is particularly touching. I am Abdul Hadi. I am from Syria. I came to Greece almost now three years ago. I came by boat from Turkey to Greece. I arrived to Lesbos, to same island and same camp. I'm working in now. When I came, I came as a refugee, but almost now, let's say seven or eight months ago, I came back to same camp as a Arabic translator for Kitrinos Healthcare. And after one month, I became as a coordinator for Kitrinos in Lesbos. We run now our clinic in Moria camp. Kitrinos now, I can say they are the first step of the health system now in Moria camp. When we started last time, like uh, in May or before, as a small NGO, we start <coughs> to see like, let's say 30 to 40 patients. Now we can cover every day 80 to 100 patients in the clinic. So for us, like, we really build our system in the clinic. We are doing our best, everybody in the clinic, doctors, nurses, translators, coordinator. So we, we try to help everybody come to our clinic, make everybody happy, because to be honest, <coughs> what I am feeling, I am one of them whom they are coming to the clinic. So I put myself in their situation I know how they are feeling, what they need sometimes. So we can understand them very well. And we are trying to cover the health system for them, be their friend or part of their family. As a Kitrinos Healthcare now in Moria, to be honest, like I cannot say we need this and need this. We need everything to keep this clinic working. We need supplies, we need medication, we need something to cover the translators for their help because they are working with us seven days per week, eight hours per day, nine to five, without any stopping. They are very happy. Sometimes I'm trying to give 
one of two translators day off, for example. I did it last week. I told them, okay, guys, two, you, two of you today, you are day off, and day after, two of you day off, and, and, and. But they said, okay, we'll have the day off. Next day, nine o'clock, they came. I told them, why you came, you are day off? They said, no, I cannot take a day off, and I know the people, they need my help. So who is working with us, if is doctor or a nurse or translators, they are there with their heart. Like they came to help, they are there to help. This it's make our clinic really like the best area I saw in my life. Seriously, they are family, they are one hand. If something happened, like immediately you find five person with you, like doctor, I'm here, doctor, I'm here. What do you need, doctor? Do you need this, all this, all this? Which language you speak? Farsi, I'm here to help you. Like you feel active immediately. Like really, I love them. I love all my team. I wish to see Kitrons in everywhere, in every camp, in every crisis, because I know Kitrinos, they are family. Like if they are in everywhere in the, or in, in, in every camp, they can give all the support or all the medical support what the patient he need of course with some support and help from other NGOs but especially Kitrons what I saw they are doing or what they did as well it's the best what I saw others um, who have themselves come on these boats and I know that some of, the, some of them have witnessed um, or experienced near death. It is that moment where you think it could be the end if your boat is stuck in the middle of the water with the boat, uh, the engine not working and it's dark and there's no battery on your phone and suddenly the water's filling in the boat. And of course, this was one of the most challenging things was the deaths that occurred. Kamal, he has this incredible kindness and humble humility and um, so dedicated. He has been in my clinic in Lesbos since the first day we opened in May 2018. And I remember after the first clinic, I was surrounded by about six interpreters and um, Abdul Hadi and our small team. And I, I knew that we'd done something special to now find ourselves inside the camp, inside the clinic, the very clinic that I had been shunned from when I first offered my services. And I explained to them how, how special it felt to me. And he remembered that, you know, because they work seven days a week for me, these young men and women. They um, often forego their breakfast. Lord knows how they slept at night. Many, some are in, you know, if they're lucky, they might have a mattress to sleep on. And they come to work. There's no issues about timekeeping. They're there, ready ready to serve. My name is Kamal Din. I'm from Afghanistan. Since one year and two months I'm here. And since 10 months, I started working as a translator with, first I started working with uh, MMS. After that, I started working with the BRF. And the main time, I started working with Kitrinos. First time I came here, I came in the island. I was working with people, I was helping people. Uh, some people, they knew that I knew some English and I was going with them to help them with elderly doctors. Then I found out like the most important thing is translators inside the camp. And then I started working with MMS and that time I, find, I found out like, okay, the most important thing is this job. It is really helpful for people, for doctors. And I can transfer the problem to the doctors. Then they will give the medication which they have with them. And 
when I started working with them, I was seeing some people when they smile after taking medication, when, when they got something from the doctors, they started smiling or they were happy after seeing the doctors. When I see the patient, when they, after, after seeing the, the doctor, they smile or they laugh after, like they get kind of happiness. Those smiles make me happy and it uh, forced me to work more here to help patients and to help refugees. Not only Afghans, not only Arabs, not only Af uh, African, e everybody. After one and a half year, then I decided to come to Europe. I tried a first time, we caught by uh, uh, Turkish police inside the water. They put us inside the jail. I was there for one night. Another day they came and they, uh, they said you are free to go and they, they gave me a letter to go to the city which I was leaving first. Then I spoke with the smuggler, okay. I said to him, I have another option. It, is, it means the last option which I want to try. So everybody was telling to me, okay, come on, don't go. It is really scary. You, you will die inside the water in case if the boat sink inside the water. I said, so there is two things. Uh, one is you will die inside the water or you will reach the main, the main uh, goal. So my goal was coming to Europe to find what can I do for my life, for my future. There is no hope actually, there is no hope. When you see the water, when you see the waves, and all the noise, like the sound of the waves, it makes you to kind of, uh, it gives you kind of feeling like there is no hope, there is no ho life after this. So every second you will think you will die here. So when I saw the Coast Guard, they, they came and I was feeling, okay, here we are, I reached uh, Europe and then I was thinking, okay, now I have to find out and I have to try my best to, to get my goal, uh, to do a good thing. Still there is no future, I'm thinking, because I wanted to continue my education. So many time I'm here, I said to myself, okay, I, being here, to be alone and not to do anything good for yourself or for other people, it is no use. Just tell you're here, tell like how long you're here, you do something, it is, should be useful for you or useful for somebody else if it is not useful for you. Then I started working with doctors as a translator and still I'm here. Recently, by prayer of people, I got my residence and I applied for ID card. So next month, maybe they will give me ID card. I don't know how, how long it will take, but they said next month. If you ask me the main dream, which I have in my mind is, I think I should work till the last refugee be in this island. I should work and I should help them. All of them should re reach in a mainland to be in a better place. Zara is such a sweet little girl. She, she is such a young thing, but so keen to prove that she can be better. Many of these young girls who come to work with us in our clinic, they, want, they have aspirations. They want to go to university. They want to complete their education. Many of them want to even become doctors like me now. And Zara is one of those individuals. She's very um, ambitious, extremely ambitious. She speaks English beautifully, impeccably, and um, a very sensitive individual too, so, and mature. And I think they kind of remind me of me in a way because um, I left home when I was very young. I was 14, 15 when I left home for educational reasons. And that's why I think I can relate to the people is that they want a better life and they know that there are opportunities and chances and they will need to take the steps that will get them closer to those chances. 
I'm Zahra Haideri, uh, one of the staff for working in uh, Katrina's healthcare. I'm working here as an interpreter. Uh, at the first, I was looking uh, for a chance or for an opportunity uh, to get involved with these groups who are working voluntarily for the people who are here, especially those people who need to be helped with them. This uh, cute group was asking me for help and I replied them, I joined them, and right now it's my pleasure to work with them. If I got my residency in one of the Europe countries, of course that I applied for, and I'm waiting, I am gonna come back here to work voluntary here, not only as an interpreter. The next time I'm gonna come here as a doctor, as a nurse, or as a anything that I think it might be helpful for these people. This situation teach me a lot of a lot of things. Uh, like these people really need it, really need it, and there's no any organization to help them. When I am telling you that there is no organization, I mean the responsible organization that they supposed to help them, but they are not. We're working as a family, very close. The memories that I can remember when I think or when a person asked me about Katrina's whole good things, full of experience. Uh, I, when I came here at the first time, it was just like a normal person. But right now, if I want to go out of this spot one day, or if I want to go in my main land, I will be an expert. And I got my experience. I help for a lot of persons. And this situation is not only applying for me. This is applying for all the staff that are working here. Not only the interpreters, all the doctors, uh, all the staff that they're working at all. I'm pretty sure 100% that Katrina's will improve more than that it is right now. Because I know all the staff are working. I know the founder of this healthcare. She is one of the uh, best persons that I know. She's trying hard about the manager, that uh, he's doing well, really, and about all the staff, that they're, they're very glad to working with them. It's not a kind of uh, obligation to work with them. It is my wish for them to go in a better place, to take out of this stressful place. Katrinos has been an incredible um, example of um, what a small piece of success can look like in a refugee crisis. For the people most of all, I'm hoping that the patients are getting the care that they deserve um, and that we facilitate the care for those who can't have it at our clinic um, to get it elsewhere. Sometimes we're even able to fast track them out of the camp very, very occasionally and rarely. Uh, for the staff, these are people who have themselves come from challenging situations and were living as refugees in the camps and are living as refugees in the camps. They haven't got skills or a CV to speak of, but having worked with us, we provide them some training, we give, give them some level of um, moving forward. And I'm so pleased to say that at least four Interpreters, for example, who've worked with me in the past have gone on to do much better jobs with bigger organisations who jump to employ them because by then they don't just have language skills, they have even life-saving skills. The biggest challenge um, continues to be stability of funding. We have to sometimes scale back our services and my biggest heartbreak is when I just come to the point where I may not have enough to give to my people, my clinic staff, who are there for me every single day. I know that even if I didn't give them anything, they would still come, as has happened in one or two times. But I feel the blessings of God are with me because whenever I hit a sort of a crunch point, something else opens, another opportunity arises. And I feel like these are now not just my opportunities, but the opportunities of those individuals who want to do something bigger with their lives. 
some maybe even leave a legacy for the sake of humanity.